I'm having yes, trouble can see in. you. Can you come in on camera? I'm trying. Something's going on with my computer. It keeps like clear on the screen. Mm. There you are. There you are. Yeah, right. it was weird. It could. It was like kept clearing my screen. Mm. All right, we're good to go. All right, everyone's ready. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the Ridgewood Village Council Public Work Workshop, March third, two thousand twenty-one. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by posting on the bulletin board in Village Hall by mail to the Ridgewood News <coughs> Record and by submission to all persons entitled to the same as provided by law of a schedule including <coughs> this meeting. Due to the fact that we continue to meet through a remote meeting format, there are some required announcements to make. All participants are muted during this meeting. Anyone wishing to make comments may do so during comments from the public and during the public hearings on any ordinances by dialing star nine on your phone to raise your hand. And then once you are recognized, dialing star six on your phones to unmute or by raising your hand icon if you are on your computers. You must state your name and address for the record. Members of the public may also submit written comments to us for any future remote meetings by either emailing Donna Jackson, Deputy Village Clerk at djackson at ridgewoodnj.net with the subject line comments for village council meeting or written letter to Donna Jackson, Deputy Village Clerk. Written comments must be received by 4 p.m. on the day before the remote meeting in order to be read into the record during the meeting. All written comments must adhere to the time limits already set by ordinance. Members of the public, Commenting during a remote meeting shall not act in any manner to disrupt the meeting. If anyone becomes disruptive during the meeting, they will be muted. If time permits, the disruptive individual shall be allowed to speak after all other members of the public are provided an opportunity to comment. Any continued disruption may result in the member being prevented from speaking during the remainder of the meeting. Disruptive conduct includes, but is not limited to, shouting, interruptions, and the use of profanity. May I have a roll call, please. Councilwoman Perrin. Here. Councilwoman Reynolds. Here. Deputy Mayor Seaton. Here. Councilwoman Walsh. Here. Mayor Knudsen is absent. All right, will everyone please join me in a flag salute? I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. And to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, please join me in a moment of silence for all, all of our servicemen and women and our first responders. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Dylan, I guess we'll go to um, comments from the public, not to exceed three minutes per person and 40 minutes in total for this round. Anyone all right. Ready? First person is Scott Leaf. Please unmute. Good evening and hello. All right, my name is Scott Leaf and I am president of the Ridgewood Chamber of Commerce, 27 Chestnut Street in Ridgewood. Now, good evening. Once again, I am here to give you an update on Health Barn. Now, if you're regular to this venue, you may already be familiar with me talking about a grant that Health Barn applied for from the New Jersey Economic Development Association. Tonight, I'm here to tell you that that grant has been awarded, $1 million. Over the next 90 days, thanks to Health Barn, Ridgewood restaurants will be feeding those who have had trouble feeding themselves. When you look at our village during the pandemic, Health Barn was key in raising over $100,000 with Feed the Front Lines in 2020. That's over 8,000 meals served in a four month period. Combine that with what we've got now, that grant and the money we raised prior, that's $1.1 million to serve 108,000 meals. Now those meals will feed not only Ridgewood residents at Ridgecrest Senior Housing, Share Senior Housing, West Bergen Mental Health, and Ridgewood Social Services, but others in need in Bergen County. That means food from Ridgewood restaurants will be feeding people throughout Bergen County who are food insecure. I have heard comments recently that Health Barn USA and Health Barn Foundation are not the same. Let me be clear. Everything under Health Barn is Stacey Ante. They are one in the same. And thanks to her generosity and tenacious desire to help the food insecure, hunger will take a hit in Bergen County. And it's so incredible to think that Ridgewood restaurants will be the ones providing the food and being paid for their services. 
please keep an eye out on Facebook and Instagram for information regarding our efforts with Feed the Front Lines. And when you see our volunteers, and when you see our restaurant workers, and when you see the recipients and other beneficiaries, remember, it's Stacy Antine and Health Barn that made this possible. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next is Jessica Arbeck. Hi, everyone. I hope everything is well with you and your families. Um, Jessica Auerbeck, just a resident, uh, 312 Walthery Avenue in Ridgewood, New Jersey. Um, just like Scott, I just wanted to comment. On oh, whoops, hold on. Can you hear me now? Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, so like Scott, I just wanted to comment on the status of the renewal of the Health Barn lease at Habernickel Park, as I believe the current status is still being debated by the council. Um, my family participates heavily in the educational programming at Health Barn through multiple classes and summer camps. I have two kids and my husband were, were big Health Barn supporters, and I'm just urging council to make a decision to secure Health Barn at Habernickel on behalf of not just my family, but all families that participate in the program, as well as the families and seniors being served through the Health Barn Foundation, along with the support to the Ridgewood restaurants through the NJEDA grant. Thank you. Uh, Dylan, next. Okay. Next is Rura Calabi. Please unmute. Good evening. Yeah, uh, Rory Callaby, 374 Evergreen Place. Uh, I'd like to speak about Shedler. Uh, as I indicated at the last meeting, I'm highly confused by what is going on there. And in all candor, I don't have the feeling the village hall or the village council has a better grip on the project than I have. You owe it to the taxpayers of Ridgewood to issue a report detailing what is going on with the project. List the objectives, including the use of the house and the land, and what has been accomplished and what needs to be done. You need to present the expenditures on the house and property so far, and the budget for what work needs to be done. The report must be written in a simple, straightforward manner. It should be written with total integrity detailing what went wrong as well as what went well. What the residents of Ridgewood do not need is a whitewash. Considering the disastrous state of this multi-million dollar project and the temptation of certain council members to play the blame game, I suggest you hire an independent law firm to undertake the study. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Next person is Han. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Good evening. Hans Jürgen Lehmann, 234 Union Street. Tonight, I would like to address this council on a personal grievance. I am going to try not to sound like a broken record, but here goes. All of you on this council have been elected by a majority of the participants participating voters in your election, but a majority of the voters is just that. It does not represent all of the residents of the village. Yet in this form of government, each and every one of you is responsible for all 25,000 residents. To the best of my recollection, all of you made a promise to be open in your public dealings and to be available and communicative with the public. In this case, I am the public for the moment. For all the times that I have spoken to this council and written to this council, I can count on the fingers of one hand the replies I have received. Friends and acquaintances recount the same experience and frustration. With some notable exceptions, you are not true to your campaign promises. So it is that council members listen to the complaints of the few and, and ignore the affirmations of the many, health barn and pickleball, prime examples. We have to endure your political machinations where Health Barn is concerned. An income producing property of which you are a rather poor landlord, judging by your estimation of the property. 
literally dozens upon dozens of residents have spoken in favor of health bond. We want health bond to remain in Ridgewood. You force dozens of Ridgewood senior residents who love to play pickleball to pay an additional cost while you limit access to the courts. Never mind that you have made our village friendless to seniors in neighboring communities. It makes it impossible to be considered a good neighbor. We are becoming something of a laughing stock after the pop, pop, pop comments in the newspapers and live news. Budget discussions disclose serious issues with spending in this community. Yet you have no problems in throwing money at the Shedler property, which has been looking quite the mess for way too long now. So what is your plan for that house? Now that the State Historical Commission has endorsed all or most of that acreage to be historic, what is the plan now? I have no way of knowing how or why that happened, and no one seems too eager to share that information. There are way too many dealings behind closed doors. Not too long ago, the mayor referred to the purchase of the empty hall next to the library as part of the village campus. When did that happen? This is another property where money is being spent like you have a printing press in the basement. And please don't tell me that is water company money you have been using. The taxpayers of this village pay that bill as well. And we pay for any bond issues that you may be using to cover yeah. your excessive costs. That's uh, three minutes, Hans. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. All right, next person is Tina. Please unmute. Hi, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Hi, my name is Alexis Larkin. I live at 143 Forest Road. I'm one of your neighbors in Glen Rock. And I'm calling about the Health Barn as well. I wanted to say congratulations to the Health Barn on the grant they got. This is the second time that I'm calling um, to make a comment about Health Barn. I'm one of the many parents that I know have reached out to you whose children's health has been improved there, um, specifically kids that have feeding disorders. And so I'm so excited to see that not only is the Health Barn helping kids who really need this assistance, but that they're helping Bergen County as a whole with food security. So I would just encourage you as one of your neighbors who comes to Ridgewood and uses this service that you renew their lease um, and keep them in your village. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, next person is Eileen Smith. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. My name is Eileen Smith. Um, I reside at 22 Liberty Street and I'm also the owner of McMurphy's Restaurant. We've been in the village for 32 years now and I'm just calling in reference to the health barn. And I just wanna say that in addition to the million dollar grant that we got that helps us Feed the Hungry, Us Restaurants. The fact that she also, that Stacy did the Feed the Front Lines back when COVID first started in uh, March, April and May, I have to say on behalf of myself and other restaurants, it really helped us stay afloat, which was a really scary part of that time in our lives because this is what we all depend on. And we've been in the, in the village for so long to think that we may have to close because of it. It was her and the others that got the Feed the Front Lines that helped us stay afloat and it's very important to the village and to the community that the health barn stays in business. And I quite was very upset that they even thought about not renewing lease because it's humbling that she's giving us the opportunity to help people that need help when we are able to do it. And I just wanna just say that, you know, please consider renewing her lease because it means a lot and what she does for this community and this town is amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, next, Dylan. Next person is Billy Wood. Woods. Hello, good evening. Please unmute. Uh, please unmute and state your name. Oh, there you go. The record. I'm sorry, I apologize. Okay. Um, my name is William Woods. I'm the owner of Chestnut Deli and Catering at 25 Chestnut Street in Ridgewood. Uh, as well as being a, a business owner in town, I'm also a resident. 
Um, my concern tonight is the lease for the health board. Um, I realize that their lease may be up soon. Um, in my opinion, it would be detrimental to Ridgewood to lose it. I know Stacy does so many good things for so many people besides just nutrition. I know she works a lot with Cher, Ridgecrest, and several cancer patients at Valley Hospital, um, as well as re most recently organizing the million dollar grant that we received from NJEDA. Um, the grant itself, I think, is the vaccine that the CBD really needed. Uh, there's about two dozen restaurants involved that are maybe gonna have a little bit of a lifeline here. Um, so it's in my best interest, and I think the best interest of the village of Ridgewood to carefully consider renewing the lease for Stacy. Um, like I said, the million dollar grant, share Ridgecrest, Valley Hospital cancer patients, as well as encouraging and teaching people how to eat nutritionally, it's a landmark. Um, hopefully you guys can consider renewing the lease for uh, Health Barn. I think it will be the best interest of the village of Ridgewood. Thank you very much. Thank you, William. All right. Thanks, Dylan. Anthony Bucco. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Anthony Bucco. I am from Felina Restaurant, 54 East Ridgewood Avenue. Uh, I wanted to uh, jump on the call here as, uh, again, as another representative of the, you know, the CBD and kind of commend Stacey Antin and Health Barn for obviously their contribution uh, to our efforts, you know, in our industry. Uh, above and beyond that, I mean, listen, you know, what she brings to the community in terms of positive uh, press and energy and what she's doing for the public, I think are things that, you know, there should really be no debate over renewing a lease. There should be a debate over what, when we're going to be awarding her um, and recognizing her contribution to the community, the county, and the state. So I'll leave it there. And I, like I say, I look forward to hopefully hearing that her lease has been renewed. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. All right. And next is Jeannie Johnson. Please unmute. Good evening. Hi. Hi, I'm Jeannie Johnson, 325 Maston Place. And I just wanted to say, I really, really hope that you guys can expedite this process, this RFP process for the uh, gatehouse uh, property. Um, I don't know how many other people want to uh, take out a lease there. I know that Health Barn is there now. I think that they are an, uh, a huge, uh, a, a wonderful addition to our community, obviously. $1 million grant and her healing meals organization um, for Ridgecrest and other uh, share house and, and various other uh, food insecure organizations within our own communities. She serves meals to social services. Um, I think that Stacy deserves to have uh, respect. Um, and so I understand that the process needs to be uh, put out there as an RFP. And I suggest very, very strongly that this council stops stonewalling stops pulling you know dragging their feet on this it is uh you know it is unconscionable to think that we would have an empty gatehouse there um it needs to be rented to someone otherwise we are going to see vagrants we'll see you know all kinds of vermin inside an empty house so i just really really encourage this uh council to expedite on this rfp as quickly as possible i mean seriously this has gone on too long. Sure, there are repairs that need to be made, but um, I think all of that can be rectified. I don't think that uh, raising the house is even an option. So please do what you are supposed to do and get this RFP out there and get it taken care of once and for all. And now let me just speak to Shedler. There are a lot of things going on at Shedler. I get it. But I think the needs have changed since you have, uh, uh, you know, dragged your feet on that. I think that it's another thing to take a look at the needs of the 
community. And I think that it's, it's okay to take a little bit more time and revise the plan and put the pickleball courts over there. Who's gonna listen to pickleball uh, on Route 17? I really believe in my heart and soul <laughs> that George and Martha would have really wanted pickleball to be on that property. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Dylan. I have no others. That was the last one. All right. Is there uh, any to read into the record, Donna? No. We don't have any. All right. So I'd just like to um, close public comment. And uh, I'd just like to add that uh, Shedler and Health Barn will be topics of discussion on the March 24th work session agenda, I believe. So with that, we'll go to the Deputy mayor. May I be heard just for a moment? Sure, go ahead. Um, I accept Hans Jurgen Lehmann's criticism of the council, certainly for myself. I think dialogue between the council and, and our constituents is very important. And I have not been able to respond as I would have liked to. So I apologize and we'll try to do better. Okay. All right, we'll go to the manager's report. Or um, I just want to remind you, we're coming into spring. I'm hoping we get no more snow. However, if we do, or if we have some icy weather, just remember that you do need to bring your regular garbage cans to the end of your driveway for garbage pickup. And also that we will not pick up garbage in the rear yard until you have a clear path. Um, snow must be cleared from your sidewalks and residential zones within 24 hours of it falling. And also don't forget to remove snow from vehicle roofs before driving. COVID-19 vaccine, uh, there is general information about vaccines on the state website. Um, you can register at Newbridge Medical Center, Holy Name Medical Center, Hackensack Meridian Health. This information is on our website. In addition, the Redwood Health Department, although we encourage you to register on many, as many sites as possible, because we are not guaranteed vaccine. We have been fortunate to get vaccine for the last couple of weeks. The link for Ridgewood residents to register for the COVID-19 vaccine will be sent in an e-notice and put on the village website. Um, once you do register on that, then um, you'll get a return email saying, thank you for registering. And then when you your name comes up, we have a um, list of hundreds of people right now, but we do move through it fairly quickly because many have already gotten um, vaccines when we call them. Um, when your name does come up, um, we will tell you when and where to uh, report for a vaccine. Um, and for those who do not have access to technology, you may call to register at 201-670-5500, extension 244. Um, you may have to wait um, a day or two to get a return call because that voicemail, I can tell you, is pretty full all the time. However, again, the number is 201-670-5500, extension 244. Um, we'll put that on the website as well. Um, again, we are not guaranteed vaccines week to week but we've been fortunate in being able to um, vaccinate um, new people um, every week for the past couple of weeks. Um, Super Sign Saturday is this Saturday. It's it's 33rd year and it will be virtual. It will be an interactive live stream. Um, it begins at 10 a.m. and um, you can access it to supersciencesaturday.org and it's appropriate for all ages. Um, <coughs> We'll feature a behind the scenes live stream tour of the aquarium at one of the world's top zoos. You can learn about NASA's ISAT 2 program from NASA scientists. See the MIT Lemuelson award winning inventions by Ridgewood High School students. And there'll be 50 featured presentations from professional scientists, amateur scientists, and students from elementary to high school. Um, so I encourage you all to participate in that this coming Saturday. Also on Saturday, March 6th, the BCUA has their household hazardous waste disposal from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the foot of Empire Boulevard in Moonaki. That's rain or shine. Proof of Bergen County residency is required. Um, I wanted to give you an update on the food scrap recycling program. Um, half of the group has been um, accepted to participate in the um, program, those who apply to apply um, to um, participate. 
Um, this week, program participants are picking up their five gallon collection bu buckets. And then on uh, March 6th, Super Science Saturday, we'll take virtual attendees behind the scenes with Trenton Renewables to see what happens to all the food waste collected in Ridgewood's food recycling program. Uh, viewers will learn how food waste is turned into compost and organic fertilizer for local farms, as well as renewable biogas to power their state-of-the-art facility. Um, we do have some cancellations due to COVID-19 and the gathering uh, uh, limits. One is the annual baseball parade and family fun event, and the other is Earth Day, Fair, Daffodil F Festival, and Dog Parade, which are all on the same day. Um, Village Council upcoming meetings. Next week, March 10th, our Village Council public meeting is at 8 p.m. March 24th is our Village Council public work session at 7.30 p.m. And April 7th is a Village Council public work session at 7.30 p.m. In addition, on March 8th, Monday at 5 p.m., we have our final budget meeting. Um, that's all I have. Thank you, Heather. Uh, now we'll go to council reports. Uh, we'll start with Councilwoman uh, Perrin. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, CBDAC, the Central Business District Advisory Committee, has not met. However, uh, we did develop a flyer and with the Chamber of Commerce, we have been uh, delivering the flyer, which tells employees downtown where they can park and how they can get certain passes and uh, goes into all the details. So we've been papering downtown so that the employees will know about that. Also, you should know that we have updated parking on the website. Thank you, Heather. Uh, and so there's more instruction there for the general public. Um, we also, thanks to Dylan, received the website that was designed, well, I think it was over 10 months ago, at least, um, before my time on the council. And at the next CBDAC meeting, we will be addressing that, what, what our next steps will be with that website. Um, uh, Mr. Rogers and the CFO and I are going to meet and discuss how we can broaden the base of contributors for the grab and go parking spots. Um, Green Ridgewood meets tomorrow. Um, our RGEA, the uh, Renewable Government Energy Aggravating Subcommittee has been meeting and researching. Um, we are, oh, and also Green Ridgewood has a date for styrofoam recycling in Ridgewood. That will be April 17th in the Graydon Pool parking lot. And that'll run from 10 a.m. in the morning until one o'clock. The first hour, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. will be for Ridgewood residents only. And this is for the type of styrofoam that is white and is for packing. It is not for the kind of styrofoam that is used for um, takeout foods. Uh, and it must be white, clean, and it must have no tape or glue on it. Uh, let's see. And the food waste program has started and this is what our buckets look like. This is the five gallon bucket that the town will issue uh, when, when and if you're on the list. We are not supposed to start until March 8th filling it. Chamber of Commerce has not met since our last meeting and uh, the open space commi committee will be meeting tomorrow night. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Reynolds. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, the planning board met last night. We listened to an application at 2-4 Garber Square, which is for a restaurant on the first floor as well as the lower level and then a six room in on the second floor which is interesting. We Ridgewood could have our first in. Uh, the owner seems very excited to keep, he understands the historic elements of the building and he plans to keep the facade the same, just change, you know, just do a painting. He hasn't decided on color. When he does, that'll come to Historic Preservation Committee for approval. Um, he also plans to continue the historic charm inside the building as well. And it was unanimously approved. And I think it sounds like a great project. It should be exciting and bring, you know, some 
excitement to the west side of the CBD. Um, 555 Maple Acquisition, which is an application for a surface parking lot on Maple Avenue, very close to the Hohokus border. That was carried to April 6th. That'll be listened to then. The memorialization of the Hopper Ridge Condominium Association approval was also carried to March 16th. And lastly, we had a discussion regarding the climate change bill and its effect on our master plan. So after some discussion, it was decided that the, there's a master plan subcommittee from the planning board. They will be meeting to discuss these issues further and get back to us with a report. And that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilwoman Walsh. Thank you. Um, I don't have anything to report for my committees this week, but I just want to remind everybody that project graduation and the fashion show, fashion show is March 18th, and um, we're hoping that residents will go on hand bid and set up an account and just bid on all the auction items. It is the only, uh, it is the biggest fundraiser to pay for all the project graduation activities, which we're going to have for the graduating seniors at Ridgewood High School. So we're just hoping everybody can chip in and, and, and help out and maybe bid on some of the auction items. That's all I have. All right, thank you, Councilwoman Walsh. And for me, I have uh, two announcements. The Community Center Advisory Board met on Thursday and a couple events uh, of events that they're planning is a March 18th pedestrian safety walk hosted by Easy Ride. That is start at 10.30 a.m. Uh, via Zoom. And that'll be um, tips for senior citizens on um, being a safer pedestrian. Uh, April 1st, the, there will be another uh, Zoom event, the 1960s events that shape lives. And that will also start at 10.30 a.m. And then also on April 1st, later that evening, uh, there will be a... Um, I guess a roller rink dance party for um, sixth grade students from seven to from six thirty to seven thirty, and for seventh and eighth grade students from eight to nine p.m. And there will be a DJ and a ten dollar uh, cover charge, and all that information. Additional information on those um, those events can be found on Community Pass or on various uh, Village of Ridgewood Facebook pages. A uh, couple of events that um, Age Friendly Ridgewood is um, is sponsoring is um, March 30th from 1 to 3 p.m. via Zoom. It's uh, Get It Done When You're Depressed. And the other uh, event via Zoom will be decluttering, and that's April 19th from 7 to 8 p.m. And uh, further information could be found at agefriendlyridgewood.org for those events. Uh, following the Community Center Advisory Board, the Ridgewood Arts Council met later that night, and um, it was discussed that um, April 19th will be a, um, a virtual uh, via Zoom um, artist talk with um, Ali Stroker. She'll be interviewed, and um, the event uh, will be um, publicized, and we will get further details out as the date comes a little bit closer, but everyone's excited about that. And um, also during the Arts Council meeting, a presentation was given by resident Jeannie Johnson to um, place about five murals uh, around the central business district. They would be painted on a removable material. So it wouldn't be like they'd be going up on the side of historic buildings. Um, and residents would be encouraged to walk around the central business district and find these, they won't be directly, all of them will be directly out in the open. So it'll encourage walking through the downtown and visiting various businesses. Um, the Ridgewood Arts Council voted to, um, to endorse this, um, this project. And um, I guess the, uh, the next step forward, um, Heather, if we could get on the uh, March 24th work session, uh, like a 10 or 15 minute spot for presentation so that uh, Jeannie Johnson could come in and answer any questions that council may have or um, you know, any kind of details that anybody, anybody else would want to know because uh, she obviously presented at the committee and I'm just reporting back here. So she would have further details. And uh, of course it would 
require council approval and that's the way we would go. So that's all I have. And um, with that, we go into our discussion items and we could begin with Ridgewood Water. Okay, so the first one is an ordinance which sets uh, the rates for the volume rate increase as well as the PFAS treatment charge. Um, each year, the water utility budget is developed and evaluated against anticipated revenues. In this evaluation is a consideration of the funding structure for the utility over the next three years. Based on this year's budget calculation, a 3% rate increase is proposed. The new volume rate proposed is $5.36 per thousand gallons. This has been validated by the village's rate expert and has been developed in a way that is consistent with industry standards and sound rate setting principles. Um, the 2021 PFAS treatment charge is to meet the funding demand for operations, maintenance, and debt requirements to support the investment to filter PFAS from the drinking water. Ridgewood Water um, is therefore um, proposing a separate charge. Um, the charge will be calculated each budget year based on budgeted expense associated with the new treatment. Um, the charge may be removed or offset in the future by any grant funds or legal recovery that is made by Ridgewood Water for the PFAS treatment. Um, I'll just have Richard Calby go into a little bit about what those charges are and then um, when we expect to see those um, charges in the bills. Thank you, Heather. Um, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Rich. Um, just uh, you know, follow up from our February 22nd budget hearing. Um, you know, our two, 2021 revenue requirement for the utility is $17 million thousand um, dollars to make that revenue requirement we're proposing this three percent increase as well as this PFOS treatment charge for the first time on the utilities history um, what we did this year is segregated out portions of the budget that are equated to the village's cost for PFOS treatment both on the operating side and the capital side for debt that's been currently um, invested in treatment and future debt that will be invested in other treatment as to get the entire system PFAS free. So this year there's $1.8 million of that $17.4 million budget that is equated to PFAS operations and debt. Um, the majority of that is already covered in the base rates. So we're already collecting that money as part of the rates that have been approved in prior years. Therefore, the net requirement for this year is approximately $316,000. So as a result of that, we distributed it in accordance with meter sizes. That way, those consumers pay for based on the size of the meter equated to the amount of flow that meter could take. The majority of our consumers are five-eighths meter residential properties, um, and they will pay $3.30 per quarter for the PFAS charge for this year. And then it goes all the way up to our largest meter four inch, which will pay $82.50. Each year we'll reevaluate these charges based on changes in operations regarding PFAS and the increased debt that, that will be calculated for further investment. Um, we felt that that was the best way to go rather than start with a, a flat rate that would be the same for every year to make it just calculated on an annual basis and validated every year from our rate council. He felt that this was the most appropriate way as well for us to do it and to be fair to all ratepayers. Um, in future years, we may balance off some of the flat charge by doing it as a, a percentage base, base, um, basis in the rate as well to limit the amount of that fixed charge. And we will of course offset any of it with any funds that are recovered from uh, legal remedies or grants that the village and Ridge of Water received to offset the costs. Thank you, Rich. Uh, questions or comments? No? Okay. On. Next um, item is awarding contract for Ridgewood Water Station improvement for the east side and Farview pumping stations. Um, for this, the improvement work includes building electrical, mechanical, site security, and system deficiencies and improving that, replacement of old pumps and motors new variable frequency drives for pumps, new HVAC systems, new electric service and upgraded electrical components, replacement fencing, security signage and lighting, new doors and windows, new roof and painting. Um, 
So uh, out of the 14 bid packages picked up, three bids were received. Um, Boswell Engineering is the engineer of record for the project, and they are recommending the low bidder DeMayo Electrical Company, Inc. of Hillsborough, New Jersey, in the amount of not to exceed $1,164,800. The funding for this project is in the original water capital budget. Questions or comments? Go ahead. I got a question. Um, so for, for projects like this, do we have like a, 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 a life expectancy on this type of work that's done or like, is this done every 10 years, every 20 years? Like what is the, what is the, you know, to kind of break it out uh, along the life of, of the work, how long does it typically last or what's the life expectancy? It, it, it varies based on the component of the work. Um, you know, the best analogy I could give it to is your house. Yeah. Um, a lot of these instances were upgrading the electrical um, panels, um, all the wiring. Uh, we're putting in new HVAC units. So on average, I would say the, the equipment that's going in has a lifespan of at least 25 years. Okay. In some cases, it'll be more. Um, we're replacing electrical controls that um, in some cases have been in the buildings for 50 years. Wow. Um, I would hope the new equipment we're putting in will last that long or hopefully longer. So. And, and all of it's being done by outside. None of it's being done by, by us. None of the work's being done by us at all. Um, we do regular maintenance at stations as things fail. Okay. Um, but for the past three years, we've been taking advantage of trying to be proactive at stations and doing a, a continuous overhaul. That way we get ahead of the emergencies. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, okay moving on. then I'll move on to the next one. This is uh, Ridgewood Water, um, various site improvements to water storage and pumping facilities. Um, this is at Ridgewood Water's Ames Tank, Southside Reservoir, Cedar Hill Reservoir, and Sycamac Booster Station sites. The improvement work includes security fencing and signs, pre-removal installation of electrical poles for future video surveillance, guardrail for fence, and site security and driveway improvements. Um, DJ Agarian and Associates is the engineer of record for this project, and their recommendation is to award the base bid contract to, um, I'm sorry, there were six bids picked up, four were received. DTS Trucking LLC of Fourth Row, New Jersey was actually the low responsible bidder at $458,195, and the funding is in the Ridgewood Water Capital Budget. Questions or comments? Um, it looks like the lowest bidder was CMS Construction. Yes, that that bidder withdrew their bid due to a mathematical error. Okay. And they, they were significantly lower than the uh, estimate, yeah. so we questioned there from the beginning. Okay. And they got in touch with us and said they made a mistake on the calculation. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. All right, moving on. Thank you, Rich. Um, there's no, nothing under parking this evening. Under budget, uh, we have a work contract for animal control services and waterfowl management. This is the second year of a two-year contract to uh, Tyco Animal Control Services of Hohokus, New Jersey. The uh, not to exceed price is $31,800. $26,800 of that will go for animal control and $5,000 for waterfowl management. Questions or comments? All right. Next. Yeah, I ha I do have a question. Go ahead. So Tyco picks up the carcasses if if animals are hit in the street or anything like that. Where do they dispose of them? I don't know. I, I can find out for you. I, I I'd be interested to know. Yeah. Okay. Now there, I don't know that Tyco picks up um, animals in the street. I think doesn't Tyco just work with the live animal issues it does no, actually indicate in their contract that they do pick them up they do um, but many times i know that you know um some of our garbage collection crews depending yeah i was gonna say oh chris is <laughs> yeah it says that animals on this, on public streets will yeah. be removed and disposed of in out. a professional dependable timely manner but right. it doesn't say where right. yeah. i'll find out 
I'll okay. let you know. Thank you. Did Chris have a comment on that? Chris, did you have a comment on that? Street division scrapes them up off the roadway and we dispose of them as solid waste. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, street honest. division is significantly quicker than uh, Tyco is. We yeah. let the deer, Tyco takes care of the dead deer because they're a bigger challenge to get rid of. But like yeah. your possum, your raccoon, your squirrels, when they expire on our roadway, we let our crews know, uh, they pick them up and off they go to solid wasteland. Okay, that's, that's what I thought, kind of. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Sure. Okay. The next one is an awarding a contract under state contract um, for the spatial data logic software, which is used for permit tracking, health department inspections, pet licensing, and also will be tied into our GIS ESRI system. Um, this is actually the 2020 um, contract. SHI did not receive direction from spatial data logic to build the village of Ridgewood in 2020. So um, that price is $32,500, which is no increase from the 2019 price. Uh, we will be looking at um, doing the contract for 2021 in May. So that's usually the renewal time. SHI is a reseller for spatial data logic under state contract, and they wait for um, direction from spatial data logic, which they didn't receive in 2020, probably. My guess is due to COVID, but. In any case, we do need to pay for 2020 at this time. Thank you. Oh, Questions or comments? Question mm -hmm. about the resolution. It mentions in the first whereas that monies will be available from the capital accounts, but then under be it further resolved, it speaks to operating monies in the IT operating account. Is that as it should be? Uh, I'm just a little confused. Well, so it, it is from operating, correct? It's operating. It's from operating. We'll change the capital accounts. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right, moving okay, on. The next one is awarding contract um, under state contract. Uh, this is replacement desktop PCs in both village and water departments. Um, and it's to Dell Inc. of Round Rock, Texas for a price not to exceed $83,466.94. And this money was actually from the 2020 capital account. Questions or comments? How old are the computers we're using right now? Uh, between five and seven years. Oh. Anything else? Right next. Okay. Our next one is the emergency purchase of rock salt for roadway snow and ice control. Um, the village usually purchases that rock salt through the Bergen County Cooperative Purchasing Program. As you know, we received a tremendous snowfall over the weekend of February 12th to 16th, and we had insufficient rock salt and could not unfortunately rely on the county vendor to be able to supply it. So we had to initiate an emergency purchase of this rock salt and our construction material supplier, uh, Stone Industries um, was able to offer it to us at $100 per ton. And we picked it up at their yard in Halden. So um, it's a uh, award of emergency contract to Stone Industries Inc. of Halden, New Jersey at a price not to exceed $7,964. This emergency was brought to the attention of both myself and the CFO and was approved for purchase so that we did have enough salt to get through that storm. Great, any uh, questions or comments? Yes. Uh, Chris, if we ever had leftover rock salt, can it be kept for the following year? Yes, uh, whatever we don't use stays in our salt bins, gets covered with the uh, waterproof tarps and is ready for us to use in the next year. Thank you. Okay, any others? Okay, moving okay. on. The Village's Water Pollution Control Facility has been working with Emerson Process Management on the upgrade of our SCADA system, which is used to operate the wastewater treatment plant. The current SCADA system is almost 20 years old and is beginning to fail. A recent event at a water treatment plant in Florida, which I'm sure we're all aware of, 
um, where the controls for the plant were hacked and an outside entity attempted to change chemical, chemical treatment levels as a, an additional impetus for us to upgrade and develop a more secure SCADA system. Emerson Process Management of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is a sole source uh, vendor for supplying SCADA components. Um, so Emerson's proposal to upgrade and make the SCADA system more secure is um, in the amount of $274,385. At this time, we'd like to award a partial initial award of $146,150 to begin the work. And then there'll be a subsequent award for the remainder of the work once funding becomes available. Questions or comments? Heather, just so people uh, who are watching understand, when you say a sole source contract, does that mean that there is not a bidding process because they're the only people you can buy it from? Correct. Well, they're the people who have done our work and they it's proprietary to them that the um, software we use. Chris, what else would you say? Um, we're, Emerson is also the SCADA system supplier for the water company. Um, Rich Calby and I have discussed SCADA for our, our various operations, and we're very much in favor of having a uniform SCADA system for both water and wastewater uh, to control our facilities. Any other Thanks. questions? Thanks, Chris. Uh, next. The next item is awarding a cooperative pricing contract um, to um, for 2021 Chevy Tahoe for emergency services. Um, this vehicle replaces a 2006 Chevy Tahoe, which currently has 45,700 miles and 3,300 engine hours. Um, it's in need of replacement to, due to mechanical and electrical components wearing out. It's used daily as an EMS first response vehicle. It allows the EMS member to travel directly to the scene while the remainder of the crew assembles and uh, responds with the ambulance. The first responder um, vehicle allows for a shorter lead time to start of patient care. It's also for the flexibility of having the unit available for additional calls once the ambulance arrives, helping to ensure EMS coverage. Um, it's also used to provide traffic control of emergency scenes, transporting additional manpower and towing department equipment. Um, this contract would be awarded under the Houston Galveston Area Council Cooperative Pricing Agreement to Fastlane Emergency Vehicles of Percival, um, Virginia, in an amount not to exceed $74,854. We do have Chief Brian Severia here um, in case there are any questions. Questions or comments? I have a question. Um, 45,700 miles seems low. Is that a mistake? Should it be 145,000 or? No, that's uh, not a mistake. Um, all of those miles are within the confines of the village. Well, I'd say 99% of them are. And those miles are typically done in an emergency fashion. Uh, so the vehicle is started cold, uh, driven uh, in an emergent fashion to a location. Uh, where then it sits and idles for uh, any length of time from one to six or 10 hours or more. Uh, so it's harder on the vehicle uh, than your typical uh, normal uh, driving, commuting, vacationing, or road tripping you may find. Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> you really beat it up, I guess. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, that, that's the nature of, of the beast, yes. I got the same car with double the miles and it's oh, for perfect. Sure. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, we also run in the the uh, the problem where um, your uh, your home car is typically one or two drivers, uh, where this will uh, span uh, the better part of uh, fifteen or twenty different drivers uh, throughout its lifetime uh, in a general year, uh, and more so over its sixteen years we've had or fifteen years so far. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Uh, next. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Um, the next um, is. Uh, the 2021 resurfacing and repairs of various streets. There were 15 registered plan holders and the village received 10 bids. Um, the low bid was received from American Asphalt and Milling Services of Kearney, New Jersey. It's amount not to exceed 
$484.90. At uh, the low bidder com uh, submitted a complete bid package with all necessary information. And this uh, contractor was actually our paving contractor in both 2019 and 2020. The work of the project is to be funded from the 2021 capital budget. And so we're going to award an initial, uh, initial partial award for $2 million so that we can start the paving work as soon as possible. We were, um, Mr. Rodriguez mentioned that that was quite a good showing for 10 bidders and uh, it was very competitive. Thank you. Uh, questions or comments? Okay, next. Okay, the next one is um, a professional services award of contract to Connolly Hickey Historical Architects. Um, this is for application preparation for the 2021 Capital Level 2 grant from the New Jersey Historic Trust Preserve New Jersey program. Um, the source of funds would be used as the match for the Bergen County grant received. In <coughs> Holly and Hickey would also submit the application electronically on behalf of the village. And the um, dollar amount is not to exceed $2,750. Thank you. Uh, questions or comments? Okay, next. Okay, there's nothing under policy. The next one is the proposed one-way traffic for Glenwood Road. The New Jersey Department of Transportation and New Jersey Transit will be upgrading the at-grade at -grade railroad crossing of Glenwood Road to the borough of Hohokus this coming spring. Uh, this change has been approved by the NJDOT commissioner. Um, they have requested that the village adopt an act the required uh, ordinance to make Glenwood Road one-way eastbound only from Upper Boulevard to the Hohokus Municipal Boundary, which is down the hill. NJDOT and UT have stated that um, they have heard the Ridgewood residents and Hohokus businesses who wish that they would not um, make it a one-way street, but they feel that the compromise is that they did not close the crossing completely or the um, roads to the crossing completely and to keep the road open one way. Um, they will also be providing the village with a, cape, a gate to be installed across Glenwood Road near Upper Boulevard to close the roadway when it is ice or snow covered and hazardous. Um, there is a um, caveat and that's if NJT operations observation of vehicle traffic across the crossing does not show a safety improvement, the NJDOT will still have the option to close the Glenwood Road crossing to all traffic completely. All right, thank you, Heather. Uh, questions or comments on this one? I think this is a really unfortunate situation. Uh, I, if anybody, do any of you have any uh, good ideas about how we can persuade DOT to, to make this two way? I don't think we're operating from a position of strength. We're operating from a very poor position. Unfortunately, the train conductors and train engineers have reported a very high frequency of inappropriate driver actions on the crossing. Um, the historical record, the historic record on the crossing does indicate a couple of fatalities. Uh, there've been a lot of close calls. Uh, the DOT commissioner, we were told when we met with the transit and DOT did actually visit the site um, and they're hoping that a one way will improve the traffic and better behavior from the motorists. And as Heather said, if that does not occur, they still have the option to close it entirely. Uh, thank you, Chris. And, and this is, this is not new. This is something that's been ongoing for quite some time. And I believe there was a, uh, was it six months where they just kind of wanted to wait and see. And then there was six months of enforcement and the signs were put up and there were several meetings between, I, I believe, former mayor Hache and residents and DOT and transit. And it's been going on for well over, well over a year, almost two years, hasn't it? Two years. Yeah. Several years. And we have tried. We have, um, you know, approached them. We have given them information. They've given us information. But um, this is something that they feel is necessary for the safety of that crossing. 
All right, well, thank you to uh, you know everyone who was involved, and you know hopefully if uh, you know it doesn't have to go any further than than this, I guess. All right. Uh, next. The next um, is the reappointment of our Registrar of Vital Statistics, Don Cetrullo, um, to be reappointed to a three-year term, and the Village Council must adopt a resolution to do so. So we'll make that um, available for the March 10th uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. And the final um, item is amending the towing fee ordinances and also the regulations. As you know, we introduced ordinances to amend the regulations and fees for towing, um, and they're actually up for public hearing next week. Upon closer inspection and with input from some of the village towers, the police department has requested that additional changes be made to both the fees as well as the regulation ordinances. These are substantive changes. Therefore, the village council will defeat the ordinances which were already introduced and we'll introduce two new ordinances with the changes made at the March 10th public meeting. Thank you, questions or comments? All right, uh, review of the March 10th uh, public meeting agenda. Sure, we have um, proclamations, two of them. One is proclaiming March Red Cross Month and the other is proclaiming March Collateral Cancer Awareness Month. Um, we do have our budget introduction on March 10th. Um, we do have the budget message. We have an ordinance to establish a cap bank, which is um, annual. We approve the te temporary water utility capital, general capital budget and temporary parking utility capital budget. We also are going to authorize a three year revenue average for the 2021 budget. The director of the division of local government services has allowed for 2021 budget, instead of using only the prior year's revenue for the 2021 budget, they've allowed municipalities to use a three-year average of the revenues for the revenues affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, which is beneficial for us because obviously in many towns, because our revenues did not come in as expected or as they traditionally do due to the pandemic. Um, and then we have um, an approval of the municipal, municipal budget and setting the hearing date for April 14th um, for our public meeting in April for the public hearing and final adoption. Um, we have introduction of water capital budget ordinance as well as um, amending chapter 145 fees for the water rates and PFAS treatment charge. Our ordinances for public hearing um, on your draft, you do have one. Actually, we've already adopted that ordinance at our special public meeting. Um, Ridgewood Water, we have a ward sole source contract for a corrosion inhibitor, Title 59 approval and award of contract for Ridgewood Water Station improvements to east side and Farview pumping stations, Title 59 approval and award of contract for various site improvements for water storage and pumping facilities. We have the general capital budget we have a parking utility capital budget. We have amending chapter 265 for vehicles and traffic. We're establishing Glenwood Road as a one-way street. We have amending chapter 258 for towing and amending chapter 145 for fees for towing and fees as was just discussed. We have for public hearing of ordinances, amending chapter 258 towing and also chapter 145 fees for towing fees. Both of those will be defeated next week. Um, the amending chapter 249 for streets and sidewalks for the street opening permit regulations. Um, amending chapter 55 for open space recreation farmland and historic preservation committee, which sets their um, terms to two years. And then amending chapter 145 fees for the significant sewer discharge of fees for 2021. We have our continued public hearing on authorizing the renewal of the pilot agreement for Ridgecrest. We will have to continue that to our April public meeting because the appraisal will be coming in within the next um, three weeks or so. Um, resolutions is awarding a partial award of contract to a sole source supplier for upgrade of the SCADA system at the water pollution control facility, awarding a contract for animal control and waterfowl management, awarding contracts for recreation program instruction, Title 59 approval and award of contract for coach bus transportation services for our senior day trips this year. Title 59 approval and award of contract for resurfacing and repairs of various streets. 
award contract under state contract for spatial data logic software, award contract under state contract for Dell computers and software, awarding contract under Houston Galveston Area Council Cooperative Pricing Agreement for a 2021 Chevrolet Tahoe, or professional services contract for historic architectural services for preparation of the 2021 Preserve New Jersey Historic Preservation Fund grants, awarding additional amount for contracts for snow plowing services, award emergency contract for rock salt for snow and ice control, authorizing a refund and cancellation of taxes for a disabled veteran, approving pickleball regulations to Glen uh, Pickleball Courts, authorizing settlement agreement for Ames Well, and appointing registrar of vital statistics. That's all I have. Okay. Did anyone want any of those resolutions off of the consent agenda? No. But if I have a question about the social media policy, mm -hmm. I think you all wanted to see the redlined version, and I think that was circulated. If nobody wants to comment further on it, maybe we could put that on also. We're waiting for the comments from the labor attorney, I believe, correct? Ah, okay. I, I haven't heard from Dominic, I don't know. If okay, has it gone out to him? Yeah, it has gone out to him. I'll just follow up to make sure we get something before that meeting. So we might as well list it on that meeting and then wait for those comments if we can. So you don't want to, do, I thought we were gonna discuss it one last time. Before. Yeah, I mean, I think what I'm saying is still listed for the next work session and I'll get a response from Dominic by that okay. time. We'll do it then March 24th. And then everyone will have the final version and then we'll be able to discuss that and then move forward after that. Okay. Okay, Okay. Uh, with that, we'll go back to um, comments from the public, not to exceed five minutes per person. Dylan, we got it. Right. First person is Rorick Halaby. Please unmute. Uh, Rorick Halaby, 374 Evergreen Place. My comment will probably surprise uh, some of you. I just want to congratulate the deputy mayor for running an excellent, excellent meeting. Very professionally run. Uh, and, and as such, keeping your ego under control by not trying to overwhelm the attendees, people came out and contributed far more than they usually do. Uh, Mike, uh, you and I have locked horns over the years, and uh, this is life, but I give the devil credit where it's due. You ran a very, very good meeting. Thank you very much. Elizabeth, this is the big one. I don't think I'm going to be around to run any more meetings after that. That's going to kill me. Yeah. All right. With that, if we can survive any more comments, if, who's next? Uh, we have no others. Oh, wow. What a way to end the meeting. All right. Uh, well, thanks, everyone. And um, we'll see you next time. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Are we staying on for the closed session? There is no closed. No closed. Oh. All okay. <laughs> Much like the public, we get to call it an evening as well. Yep. Good, Good night. night. Thanks, everyone. Good night. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.